Have you seen the ultimate top coat? This is how I get that beautiful natural sheen level and the ultimate durability on my projects. I have worked with top coats my entire professional career. I have never come across anything that is quite as durable and easy to use as this product is. That's why we formulated it ourselves right here in the USA. We made this product designed to go with all of our systems. This coating is unparalleled in protection. This side is our normal stone coat epoxy and this side is our normal stone coat epoxy with the ultimate top coat over it. Stone coat countertops are designed to handle the use and abuse of your countertops, your tables, desktops and more, your vanities, your hearths, anything that you're dealing with in your house, this coating is designed to be tough stuff. The penny test. That penny's getting hot. Look at that. The tool test. The screw head scratch test. I almost forgot. The heat test. Woohoo, that's hot, man. That's really hot. <laughs> I don't want to worry when I'm doing construction on my projects that I'm sliding tape measures and tools, standing on the countertops to adjust lighting. I want to be able to get my job done and not worry about my finished surfaces. The ultimate top coat allows me to do so and not worry. Now let's learn how to apply it. It's simple as do it yourself. I'm going to show you the two roller technique. We're going to go ahead and apply this wet and then we'll dry roll it so it looks like we have a nice tight sprayed on finish but it's as easy as do it yourself in your own garage, your kitchen. Heck, you can do this right on site, get it done and get it done right. You can get these projects done so you can use them in a couple of days. It's a fantastic set time and allows you to get right back to full use. All right, let's go over the tools and sundries that you're gonna need for the ultimate top coat so that you're set up, you're ready to go, and it's a flawless finish every time. You want repeatable results, and that's about being organized. I'm using a microfiber one quarter inch nap roller. I like these rollers because they're easy to de-lint. You just simply use some tape and you roll it across that roller and you pull off any excess fibers. I also have two rollers here. This one's for wet, this one's for dry. I'll get more to that in a minute. But I've marked this with a piece of tape. It's almost like a candy cane. That way my eye knows this is for dry rolling, this is for wet rolling. That's a pro tip. You're gonna need some masking tape to remove that excess lint off of your rollers. You're gonna need a stir stick. You're gonna need a roller tray. You're also gonna need some gloves and just a tad bit of water as well as a mixing container. This is a two to one ratio. That's two parts A to one part B. Two parts resin, one part hardener. Okay, then I add just a touch of water so that I go ahead and thin the material just a hair. You can do it up to about 2% or about a half ounce per kit. Okay, don't worry about that. I add a little bit of water just to consistency. So I roll that out, it dissipates, and it makes a very tight finish. Don't forget to sand the surface with 220 grit sandpaper and wipe the dust. I also used a little bit of acetone to wipe any excess dust, so I ensure that I have a clean surface. Our 24 ounce kit is designed to do a 40 to 50 square foot kitchen. A little goes a long way, but what I like to do is slop a lot of material right in the center of my piece, use my wet roller to spread that out, and then come back and dry roll it. I don't start right on the edges of my surface. That's a pro tip of how I get consistency every time. Be sure not to let the contents of part A settle in the bottom of the bottle. There is a matting agent to give you that natural finish, and you wanna make sure that you Thoroughly mix that. You can even pour all of the contents of part A out into a bucket, mix that and put it back in with a funnel or just simply shake that bottle a little bit, agitate that before you pour and then go ahead and start with your part A. I have a few minutes to mix this, okay? I'm gonna mix it up thoroughly with the paint stick. After I've got it agitated, I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of water. For this amount, I'm gonna use about a cap full of water here and I'm happy, okay? After I do that, I'm gonna mix it again. Then I'm gonna pour all the contents right there in my paint tray, and I'll start to roll this on the surface. As I roll it on the surface, remember, you're gonna be tempted to come back and try to remove 
every single lap line on your first go. That's not necessary. It's not going to happen until that material tightens up and dries. That's when the lap lines disappear and you get that flawless finish. Okay, I'm gonna start with my roller that has been designated for the wet rolling, and then I'll proceed to the dry roller after I've applied it wet. Here we go. I submerge everything in that material. You can see that, that roller is just getting under and saturated in that material. I'm gonna roll off some of that excess just to really get it even on that roller. Now I'm gonna take this roller right to the center of my piece, and I'm gonna roll it out in the center. And then I'm gonna take that and use that as my reservoir, okay? I'm gonna get a little bit more on the roller, and it's important to really prime that roller when you start because you want enough material on that roller, okay? Sometimes as you start, that roller is really dry because it hasn't hit any material yet, and you don't have quite enough. Okay, now I'm gonna do those edges, okay? Roll those edges, roll that bull nose of the edge, and then I'm gonna remove most of the material that I've applied with my roller. And I'm gonna put all of the pressure on this back end of the roller and leave this light and feathery as to remove the lap lines. Let me show you how. So all my weight is right over here, okay? I'm just going through here and I'm just rolling this one final time with the wet roller. Okay, now I've switched to my dry roller and I'm just gonna go over this surface and I'm gonna dry roll it. And I'm overlapping about 50%. I'm not super light, but I'm pretty light on that roller. I'll go do those edges one final time and that's it. I'm not gonna roll it again. Okay, some pro tips and recap. Remember, it's 78 degrees in my shop. I don't wanna keep working the surface. I've got everything saturated. I applied plenty of material so I don't have dry spots. I went ahead and removed as much of that as I could with the wet roller after I applied it. Then I went one pass with the dry roller and because I applied the correct amount and I'm not trying to force it in the surface, it's gonna lay out really evenly. Right now, because it's not dry, I'm seeing a few lap lines. Those are gonna dissipate as it dries. It could be tempting to come in here and try to remove those lap lines. Don't do it. Let it dry, get your process down. Practice on a project that isn't professional. It's not something you're installing into somebody's house. Practice on something till you get the top coat system down pat. It's really easy following the instructions in this video. Check this out, ultimate top coat tip of the day. How do we address a giant kitchen, a large project, a jumbo island to make sure that we apply this the right way? You wanna make sure that you don't get lap lines. And the key there is so that the material doesn't start to set up before you're done rolling. So if I had a giant island that I'm gonna roll the ultimate top coat on, I'm gonna break that up into theoretical sections. Let's talk about a four foot by two foot section. So I would probably do this island right here in this section. I'd roll it out in full, I'd do it wet, and then I would do it dry, and then I would start in this section, overlapping the section that I just finished. Because remember, that section still has drying time. This is fast drying, but it allows you to do sections on a jumbo project. What I wouldn't wanna do is start here wet, do the entire project wet, and then come back and start my dry rolling. Typically that would take too long and this would start to set up and you'd just be cementing in those lap lines. That's a pro tip, that's how you do this professionally. Let's talk about the other side of the coin when you have a tiny project. Let's say you just have a little piece that you're trying to apply the ultimate top coat to. You're probably gonna waste a little bit of material. Why? You wanna be sure that that roller is nice and saturated. If you're just trying to use a tiny amount, you might not get that roller fully enveloped in the ultimate top coat and as you're rolling it out, you'll be leaving more dry spots on that piece and then you'll be dry rolling it and as it dries, it will be uneven on that surface. So if you have a bunch of little pieces, wait till they're all ready for the ultimate top coat and do them as a batch so that you can not waste any. You have enough top coat to saturate your roller, dry roll, let it set up, and you're good to go. Let's recap. 
How did I prep this? I sanded with 220 grit, I wiped the dust, I mixed my material, part A first, I mixed that in the container, then I went part B, two to one ratio, I added a touch of water at the end, I mixed it thoroughly for about two to three minutes, I applied it into my paint tray, I had two rollers, first a wet roller, second a dry roller. I designated those by marking them with masking tape. I applied a sloppy mess in the center of my piece and used that as my reservoir to feather that out into the entire project. I went ahead and used the wet roller to remove most of the mess and then I dry rolled it one time. It is hot in here at 78 degrees, so I don't wanna work the material longer than I need. That way nothing sets and then I go over that again and create a lap line that's not gonna level or tighten up, okay? That's a pro tip, that's how you do the ultimate top coat the right way every single time. 